so this is part two of the data binding tutorial and I'm gonna get right at it here and if you haven't watched part one you're probably gonna want to do that so what we left off with was we were going to make a new web page a new active server page uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do that now I'm gonna right click and add a new item and we want a web form and we're gonna call that teams and we're not using a master page we're gonna place code in a separate file but we're actually not gonna write any code and what we're gonna do is we're gonna put uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put this on split we're gonna put two controls in here I'm gonna use my toolbox and I'm gonna drag a drop-down list out onto that div and I'm also going to scroll down to the data list and I'm going to drag a grid view on there as well now there's nothing bound to those you can see it says unbound on the drop-down list but what I want the drop-down list bound to is the divisions table so I'm gonna go ahead and click this and I'm going to choose data source and I'm going to I'm going to select new data source. We're going to make it a SQL database and we're going to call it SQL divisions. Irrelevant what it's named, but it makes it easier later on. If we have problems, okay, now it's going to ask us what connection string do we want to use? And of course, uh, if you remember, we had already made a connection string and it was called ASP.NET DB connection string. So we can use that connection string to connect to the database since it's the same database. Uh, divisions is up. There's only you know all the tables. There's uh, there's only two items here, but we're gonna go ahead and put uh, select all, and we're gonna hit next. We're gonna test that, and you can see it's gonna give us two co both columns since we told it to select all. It's gonna give us the ID and the division. And we're going to go ahead and hit finish. That's that's configured. That is now configured. The the uh, the data source is configured. So w in our drop down list, we're telling it to display which of the two fields we want it to display the division, not the ID. That's what it's going to display. But we want the value of the selected item. To be the ID. So when we pull the drop down list, just like this one, when we select the item, the actual value of that control is going to be the number, which was our ID 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, or 8. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. This will make more sense once we see it on the web page. Uh, this is now data bound. You can see that it's data bound. I'm going to hit save all and I'm going to go ahead and debug. So that's going to bring up our our uh, web browser and it's going to display that drop down list on the on the web form in the top left corner there it is AFC East and you can see that all of our divisions are there you can select whichever one you want and it's not doing anything now because we haven't coded anything to happen once we select our team so I'm going to go ahead and close the browser and stop debugging and we are going to take the grid view and also make a data source for the grid view. Uh, right now it's none, so we want to make a new data source. We're going to use the database, SQL database. We're going to call it SQL Teams. And I'm going to hit OK. Use the same connection string because it's the same database. I'm going to hit Next. And instead of divisions, I'm going to hit Teams select teams and we want only the team name we don't need anything else because that's all we want to display now we don't want all the teams we want to do a where clause and we're gonna say where uh, we want the teams where the division ID equals the control which control the drop-down list control so basically what you're doing is you're saying we want a list of all the teams that that have the same division ID 
value that the drop-down list value has. So I'm going to add that to our statement. So now you can see when I hit OK here, select team name from teams where division ID equals at division ID. Now, at division ID is going to be represented by, that's the parameter, that's going to be re represented by that drop-down list. So whatever value is in that drop-down list, that's, that's what is going to be the parameter at division ID. So it's going to match up. We can go ahead and test that. And it, it's going to say we need, it needs to know the value. So we can go ahead and put three in there. And I'm going to hit OK. And it's going to, sh it's going to show the, all the teams that have three as the division ID. So it work, looks like it works. I'm going to finish. I'm going to hit finish. And that completed my grid view. You can see that it's now going to display the team name. Save it. Now, it's not going to work 100% yet, but I just want to uh, hit debug. We're going to start debugging. It's going to launch the browser. And you will see that there will be a list of teams, but it's not the, the web application isn't going to work 100% just yet. So I'm going to hit. And you can see that it says AFC East, and the teams are indeed there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a different division. NFC East, but it doesn't change. You can see that it just stays there. Now there's a reason for that. I can keep changing this and it's never going to do anything. It's going to just stay there. Uh, the only time it would be right is if I came back to AFC East. So I'm going to go ahead and close the browser. I'm going to stop debugging. Now the reason that this isn't working is because the drop down list the value stays at 1 the entire time, even when I'm changing the selection of it. And the reason for that is because the web page is not posting back to the server. Uh, there's a property that goes along with the uh, drop-down list. It's called Auto Post Back, which is right over here. And by default, when you create a drop-down list, the Auto Post Back is going to be set to False. But what we want to do is we want to set it to true. And that way, when we change the selected item in that drop-down list, it will send that information to the server, post back, and then the server will throw back up a new web form with the new information. Uh, that's kind of a simplified explanation, but I'm going to go ahead and save all. And we'll see if that setting that auto post back to true actually did what we expected to do and we'll go ahead and debug and comes up with our, in our web form once again this time when we select a different division we'll pick my favorite one the north it should do a post back and there we go it changes the list in the grid view to uh, display the teams that are in the NFC North. And we'll just do a couple more. We'll go with the NFC West. And it indeed does select the proper teams. So that is how you do uh, data binding to web controls. Now, obviously, a web page isn't going to look as plain as that. You're going to want to apply some styles and pretty the thing up a little bit. But this is the nuts and bolts of what is behind a data-driven web application. Uh, I'd like to hear your comments. If you have suggestions, as always, uh, tell me what you think, and we'll talk to you later.